Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, today's video is another in the series of what I'm just calling raw and uncut, because that's what it is. I turn the camera on and start fishing, and whatever happens, happens. You see it all, the good, the bad, everything in between, every single cast, you're gonna see it for as long as the camera's on, and I'm probably gonna film hour and a half to two hours today. So we'll see what all I catch in the meantime. But I'm out here on the Emory River this morning, been doing these raw and uncut videos on Melton Hill, which is a great body of water for ultralight fishing, in my opinion, because there's so many big bluegill there. And when you stumble into crappie, they're usually good size too. But kind of wanted to see what was going on out here on the Emory today, get a little change of scenery. And so I launched my kayak, pedaled upstream a good spell, basically far enough up that we can get Lawnmower Man on the video here. And now I'm going to turn and start making my way back toward the car, just throwing a jig at everything we come across so i'm gonna put the camera in the chest here i'm gonna put my sunglasses back on my head and i'm gonna take this jig this is a one inch gulp minnow on a 164 ounce jig head got my ultralight rod two pound test line and we're just gonna rock it here i'm gonna pedal over here i'm gonna start here at this tree and just pedal back downstream here just working this ledge just all the way down through here so we'll see what we can catch today let's have some fun my regular viewers that enjoy the catfish videos lord look at that i done threw the cast behind me disregard that do over raw and uncut people you see it all slipped out of my finger there uh, for my catfish audience i've been in a slump lately I just, I don't know what's up. The bite I was on kind of, there's a fish, oh, I had one. The bite I was on fizzled out and I've had a failure to adapt since. I'll get back on them eventually. But the last couple trap, the last couple, well, I can't get my words out. I can't hardly cast, we're in bad shape today. The last couple trips out, I've just stunk it up. And the best way to break a slump, in my opinion, is to bust out the ultralight rod. Cause you gonna catch some fish. You gonna get a bunch of fish. I got one right here on, I guess this is the third cast, even though the first one slipped off my finger and went behind me. That's a nice bluegill. I was curious what was going on here. Again, it's hard to, it's hard to leave a, a good bite. And I've been getting a lot of bluegill in that eight to nine inch range there on Melton Hill doing these raw and uncut ultralight videos. Really for the last month, they've been biting really good over there. So it's kind of hard to leave that, but here's another fish. Oh, I lost him. Oh, there he come back again. Pulled it out of his mouth. But I was kind of wanting a change of scenery and if I fish over here, I can drop my dog off. I, old Daphne the dog can be dropped off at the grandparents. Look at this. Well, I done got, I got a fish on too. I got my line all messed up here. I got to work that out. Well, this one's a pulling man. That's another good bluegill right here. I got to fix my line after this. I just put fresh line on this too. But anyway, I dropped Daphne the dog off. She can have a little visit with the grandparents while I catch a few fish. Look at this one right here. It's another good one. I brought my board with me today. That in there is probably in that seven to eight inch range, I would guess. Nice fish. Let's see if I can make a long enough cast to get that little loop out of my reel there. There we go. Now we're back in business. But this raw and uncut video series, this will be the fifth video of doing this. Here's another fish. Well, this tree stacked. Hopefully we get on several trees down through here like this. But the feedback on these raw and uncut videos has been overwhelmingly positive that I've gotten. A lot of people enjoy this because it's, it's more real. Most YouTube videos are just even on my own channel, or just kind of highlight videos. You know, I go out and fish for four or five hours and take the footage I get during that time, shrink it down to a 
20, 30 minute video and you know, you see the highlights, but you don't see all the, you don't see all the cast. You don't see when things go wrong. You know, when things do go wrong, you, you cast into trees, you get snagged, you, you break off. And you just never know what's gonna happen throughout the day. So this kind of gives people a real world experience and we're getting some real world bluegill right here. It's tore up my, tore up my gulp. See if I can rehook this thing here and get a few more fish on it before we switch it out. I'm gonna have to pedal back up too. I guess we got a little, a little current here this morning. So I seem to be sliding down river. I'm gonna throw a few more casts over here on this tree though till they quit biting. They seem to be all over there. Plus I wanna give lawnmower man or that may actually be lawnmower woman. Boy, somebody's trained their wife to mow the yard, y'all. I need to I need to look that person up and figure out how the hell he got his woman to do any kind of outside manual labor because I can't I can't get mine to lift a finger outside. It's all I can do to get her to cook dinner anymore. I need an instruction manual on how he's on how he's done it. Oh, and bubbles coming up right there. What do you think that is? You think that's a carp down there rooting around or something else? Here's another fish. Here's another fish is what this is. It's fun, y'all. I tell you, when you're in a slump with the catfish or whatever type of fish that you target, get your ultralight rod, get you some gulp and some small jig heads. You know, I'm gonna back off this area here. I'm a little too close. But you come out and catch you, you know, catch you 50 to 100 fish in a short time period, and you'll feel like you, you'll feel like you know what the heck you're doing. You'll feel like you're a better fisherman than you are. So anytime I'm in a slump, I like to do this right here, just to get the confidence back, just to get it going again. These fish right here are boosting my confidence. I don't know how many this is in a row. We probably got a streak going and I wasn't counting. Yeah, here, bluegill. Go down there and count up how many of your friends I've just caught. The wind's blowing a little bit downstream too. I may have to bust out the paddle today, y'all. Keep myself positioned. If I'd got out here a little earlier, oh, I'll miss that. If I had got out here a little earlier, we could have probably avoided some of this wind. But we're into September now, and oh boy, that's thumped me. That one thumped me there. We're into September, and we're in that time period now where it's cool in the mornings. You need you a, a hoodie and a, a pair of shoes and socks on in the mornings. By about 10, 11 o'clock though, it's shorts and flip-flop weather. So I waited till about 10.30 to leave the house when I could come out here and with my bare feet. Cause we running out of, we running out of flip-flop weather. It's coming to an end. And I wanna soak up every minute of it I can. Cause I like me some flip-flop weather. Fall's my favorite time of year cause the weather's Still warm enough, but it's not miserably hot. Fishing's great. Although don't tell the catfish that right now. Oh my gosh. Oh, I got lucky there. I broke off that branch. Boy, I got real lucky. I thought that one was gone. I wrapped that thing around the branch. Let me get over here and get repositioned again. But you know, the fall weather, it's comfortable temperatures. Fishing's good, football season. It's, it's just a, it's, it's a good time of year. For those of you who maybe follow along the live streams and whatnot, I play in a NFL Survivor League every year. I got knocked out on week one. I'm out. I talked all that smack, how I was gonna win, it was my year. 
went out on week one. Broncos. I took them against Seattle. That was dumb. In hindsight, that was a really stupid decision. They knocked me out. I had 48 people playing in our Survivor League. 30 of them got knocked out week one. Between the Colts, the Broncos, the 49ers, and Cincinnati, and the Titans. Just knocked out damn near the whole league. <laughs> so I've been eating some crow about that. But I still love me some football and it's just that time of year, man. September, October, November. It's just good months to be in East Tennessee. Oh, here's another one. These fish here, now they, they're getting a little smaller, I feel like. We're going to make a few more casts around this tree. I'm going to hit some different parts of it here. And then we're going to start moving on downstream. I got a feeling... If the bite is as on here as what it's been on Melton Hill lately, probably gonna find several trees like this. There's been some bigger bluegill just moved up. A little shallower right now. That jig's not sinking down far either before they're on it. I don't have my graph or anything. Uh, I'm in my old town kayak today, I'm just my bare bones set up. I don't have the graph on it. This one's a pulling. Well, I'm just throwing a cover here. This is kind of a a steeper a steeper drop here along this bank of the river, and it, all these overhanging trees and stuff kind of come out over deeper water. And certain times of year, you can stack up right here as the as the wind blows me up on it a little bit. Throw back over. And I'm gonna get repositioned again here in a second. I want to cast all over around this tree though. On this side, we're gonna make a few more casts, and I'm gonna go over here and hit this side, hit the back of it, see what's going on. Again, I want I want lawnmower or lawnmower woman up here to get the full as much camera time as possible today. Let me let me get repositioned here, y'all. Well, I'm a little dark on that screen. The sun is coming up over the trees this way, so we got a little bit of shade over here, which ain't bad uh, to have with this damn camera <laughs> overheating no time if we're in direct sun. Again, it was cool this morning. You know, we just, high 50s, you know, feels colder than it is because it's been so hot this summer. But now, once you get after about 10 o'clock, it's in the 70s and comfortable. That sun beaming down. If we have any edits at all in this video in the next hour and a half, two hours, however long uh, we run for, however long you can tolerate watching, if there's any edits, it's because the dang camera overheated. Oh, heck. I got one in this branch over here or something, y'all. I dodged a bullet the first time I wrapped up in that tree, and now I may not be so lucky on this one. You think this tree will give it back? Take your bets right now. Boy, it did. It did. If you bet that it would, you won. I don't know what you won, but you won something. I got another one after me already. He just, you just feel him. Pick, 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 pick. Oh, there he is. <laughs> How many fish is this now, y'all? It's a bunch. Off this one, that's a little bass. That's a little bass right there, a little large male. A large jaw. Getting a variety of species right now. Say hi to the camera, large jaw. Can you tell your mama hi? Fish said he ain't telling her nothing. He ain't supposed to be biting hooks. He said his his mama will take a hickory switch to him if she finds out. I hope this fella's wife or this fella 
appreciates his wife up here mowing the yard. He better kiss her on the cheek when she comes in. Doggone fish here. Little old thing. Why don't you let that jig sink down, fish, so I can get one of your bigger kinfolk. In a normal video, especially with as many fish as I'm catching, in a normal ultralight video, that fish wouldn't make the cut. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even put him in a video, but today when we're going raw and uncut, you're going to see every fish I catch, regardless of size, you're going to see every tree limb I catch, every snag, you're going to see it all. Hell, this whole dang video may be fishing this one tree. They just keep biting, man, and that's a good one. That's another good fish. I'm gonna have to switch that gulp out here in a minute. Sitting right there, man. He's probably in that seven inch range, probably there. Definitely not as big as what I've been getting over on Melton Hill, but we are liable to run into some big ones over here. May get some more bass, may get some crappie too. Goodness, they just keep biting. <laughs> I just pedaled up here, y'all. Basically, it's a real rocky bank over here going down this ledge. And I just kind of pedaled up here until I started seeing mud, you know, until there was a change. I like fishing rocks. It's kind of a pattern you, you can do out here in East Tennessee on all these reservoirs. If you get, if you get these, well, it's kind of overgrown. You can't really see, but you got a big hill here that comes down real rocky trees coming off we got a lot of that here in east tennessee with our various reservoirs fort loudon uh, watts bar melton hill you fish these areas you get a lot of fish i mean there's just a lot of bluegill crappie bass all of them up in here and so i pedaled up just following these rocks the rocks kind of end right in here and it turns into a mud bank so you got a change in the composition and I saw this tree right here sticking out and I thought, we'll, we'll just start here and work our way back. And well, what do you know? This tree's just stacked with fish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit it a few more times here too. Doo doos and giggles, you know, to see if we can get some more and we'll just make our way down river. Hopefully the wind stays like it is or doesn't get any worse. Wind is not your friend when you ultralight fishing. It's not, it's a little bit of a breeze, not bad today. Hopefully it won't get bad while we out here and we can just sit here and pound fish all the way down through here. Well, they keep pecking it and I keep missing. Let's try it one more time right there. Missed it again. Doggone fish. I'll switch that gulp out in a minute. Before we start making our way down river, I'm definitely gonna switch that gulp out. They've probably at least knocked all the juice out of it at this point. Oh, there's something was splashing right over there. Did you see that? Oh crap, let me fix this thing on the hook. Something was chasing minnows right over there. Let me just, let me just throw right over here one time. Let's see what's going on. Something hit me right away too. I've been just casting and letting that thing sink down until I get bit, but if they're over here running minnows, I may need to, may need to do some reeling. We might, I got my skipjack rod with me too. We might run into some skips out here. I've caught them down here before. All right, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's switch this gulp out. And put us one on here that I don't have to adjust on the hook every time. These things tear easily. You know, that's a common problem with the gulp, but one of the things you can do to, I don't know how many fish we've caught on this one uh, gulp right now, but it's been several. And one of the things you can do to help your calls and get more fish 
on a gulp is to use the smallest hook you can get by with. Now my jig heads here, I've got 1 64th ounce size as far as the weight, but the hook size is a number eight. And that smaller hook will allow you to not cause as big a tear in the gulp when you run the hook through. And that'll let you get more fish. Not every time, but most of the time. You know, the people say they're only getting three or four fish at the most on a gulp. Most of the time they're running hooks that are a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger diameter. And if you're gonna cast these 1 64th ounce jigs with any success, you need to be running two pound test line. The two pound test line is gonna get you, it's gonna get you more bites overall. I don't know what it is about the thinner diameter line, but that's just, that's just fact. You go out with two pound line, fishing next to your buddy in the same boat that's got four or six pound line, you're gonna catch more fish. But it's also gonna allow you to cast this lighter jig head farther distances. And it's just, a, it's needed for this lightweight jig. And quite honestly, you, you don't need, even fishing around brush and cover here, you don't need six pound, eight pound line for this. I mean, you're catching bluegill that are under a pound. You, you know, you occasionally catch bass that's three, four, five pounds on one of this. But if you got your drag set appropriately, you can you can land those fish. I've caught some big smallmouth on this ultralight setup. I've caught some big drum on it. You know, I've caught drum that are over ten pounds on this setup right here, two pound line. It's just, you gotta set your drag, you know, you gotta fight the fish. But you'll get a lot more bites if you go with the two pound versus four, six. Definitely don't wanna be using eight, but you ain't gonna get no casting distance if you're using eight pound. I'm gonna make a few casts over here. I think they about done on that tree. I'm going to make a few casts on the other side over here behind it. And then we're going to get on the move and see if we can find another tree that will be just as good to us as what this one has been. Because this tree here, I don't know how many fish that is now. That's, that's a pretty good start to the day. I wish I'd been counting and keeping up for the, for the streak. So we definitely had a streak going there at one point. All them fish are over on that one side of the tree. There's got to be something on the back side of it, too. I'm just going to back up here a little bit. And again, I'm going pedals today. I like, I like the pedals when doing this style of fishing because I feel like I've got better control. My electric motor on my Hobie kayak, it's got that remote and you don't really have, with the pedals here, I've got instant reverse. I can just pedal backwards. With the motor, I've got to spin the motor head all the way around to go in reverse with the remote. And it's just, these kayaks get blown around very easily in any kind of wind or boat wake or current just because they're so lightweight. I just kind of feel like I got better control in the pedals versus the motor. The motor's great for catfishing because of the spot lock. I can, you know, I'm oftentimes running longer distances and get there quicker with the motor than spot locks. I don't have to fool with an anchor. Better for that, but for this style of fishing, I like the pedals better. Bluegill, they better be something bigger than you on the back side of this tree or we moving on. Let's make another cast over there. If we get another one that size or nothing, we're going to turn and head down through here. Anybody that's still left watching at this point is done sick of seeing me catch fish on this tree. Here's one. Okay, here's one that's a little better. This one's a little better now. Yeah, that's a, ain't a bad bluegill right there, folks. Come up here, Leroy. 
That's his name's Leroy right here. Look at that, look at that belly on him. That's a pretty big belly for the size of him. He's got one of them Dunlop bellies, then then lopped over his belt there. What are you puking up right there? Look what you got in your mouth. What is that? He didn't want to show me. He was embarrassed that he was puked up. He got all nervous, folks. He realized he was on camera with a with a YouTuber that gets at least 11 views and he was all just nervous and he, he puked, he, he threw up. It happens, you know, sometimes people get nervous, they get sick at their stomach. Some of them throw up and some of them get the old mud butt, you know, it happens. That fish will be embarrassed the rest of the day though. He'll, he'll probably call his, his mama up and cry on the phone to her. Come on, gulp. I'm gonna fix you back on there. Let's make some more cast through here. We're just gonna just start throwing the stuff down through here, y'all, and see if we can get on some more fish. I think we might find them just all the way down through here. But undoubtedly, we'll get some more. Here's one. We'll get on, we'll get on some more just stacked up on a tree or object or something. You know, without a graph, it's hard to say exactly what they're on out there here if I can't visibly see it. But there's a lot of stuff under the water here that we just don't see, debris and stuff. Things that's falling off this hill. That's another good one right here. Say something to the camera, Bluegill, anything? He's probably in that seven, seven and a half inch range. I got my board. We may, if we get a big blue gill or if we get on some crappie, I may keep a crappie or two if we catch any. But we'll measure them if that happens. There's definitely some current out here though. I can see the stuff moving on the water. Got a little bit of flow, a little bit of movement. Water's got a little color to it out here. Melton Hill, where I've been filming these other videos, it's a very clear body of water. You oftentimes get 10 plus feet of visibility. So these ultralight techniques, the finesse stuff, it really shines over there. But when you get a little color in the water, a place like this, I think it really, I think it helps the cause. I think fish can't tell as easily that something's fake. You know what the best part of, of the weather starting to cool is these people right here and their pleasure boats and stuff. Ain't nearly as many of them on the water as what they are in them peak summer months. We're about to the end of pleasure boat season. It's coming folks. I ain't gonna miss them, are you? I ain't. If I went the rest of my life and never seen another pleasure boat, I'd be just fine. Pleasure boats and channel cats. If I never called another channel cat the rest of my life, I'd be fine with that too. All right, we on the move here, y'all. I'm just gonna cast randomly down through here at stuff and uh, we catch a fish, we'll make another cast at it. So forth and so on. We'll just cover a little water here till we get on them. What are we about? 30, boy, we're 30 minutes into this thing, according to the camera here. You know, it's easy to do. You get on a tree like that and you just keep getting bite after bite and time gets away from you, you know? And you will catch fish doing this. I don't care where you're fishing. River, lake, pond, creek. All, I've said it so many times in these ultralight videos, but it's worth repeating all fish eat small fish. It's food chain, you know, they just eat smaller, 
smaller bait fishing and that's exactly what you're representing when you're throwing a jig and a small plastic is like small oh, i had one hit me in the thin you're just representing a small bait fish that's an easy meal and they're gonna gobble it up i like the gulp because i catch a lot of fish on the fall i catch more fish on the fall with the gulp than any other plastic i've ever used I gotta spin back around. I'm getting between the wind or the current, I'm getting blown up on the bank here. But with a lot of plastics I've used, I've got to retrieve. I've got to either be reeling the bait in or working it a little bit. With this gulp, I'd bet 75, 80% of the fish I catch is just letting that jig sink down. And I'm lazy, man. I don't want to do a lot of... Re if I'm reeling, I want to be reeling in fish. That's how I feel about it. I'm reeling, reeled in a few today. Uh, today's a success no matter what happens from here, in my opinion. But I better catch some more down through here. I think we will. We're getting down here now to the part that I really wanted to fish, which is these rocks. Again, I can't tell you an exact depth, but I know right out here in the main channel of the Emory River here, it dumps into the clinch right here. You're looking 30 some odd feet, and so it comes down pretty sharp off here. You can be several feet deep really quickly off this bank. I think that's a for you tree experts out there, bush experts, I think, is that a rhododendron right there on that, on that rock wall? Is that what that is? Is that rhododendron? We got a lot of them up in the Smoky Mountains. It's about time to do some viewing of the leaves up there another month or so in the mountains. All right, that looks like a rhododendron there. Y'all may not even be able to see it with the the lighting the way it is with it looking into the shade, but I don't know. Somebody will educate me in the comment box, undoubtedly. There's always people in that comment box that knows more than me. And if you don't believe me telling you that, just ask those people, because they, I get told what I'm doing wrong all the time. <laughs> Doing something wrong right now because I ain't getting bit. We were tearing them up on that tree up there. What you gotta do though, just make some cast. You'll you'll throw it. Well, it helps to throw them in front of the damn tree, not over it. Dang gum it. But you'll throw at some of these trees and objects and they just ain't nothing on it. And you come at one like that tree down yonder and they'll just be the whole damn bluegill colony will be on it i'm in bad shape right here y'all i've thrown over two daggone branches come on now i don't want to break off nobody watching at home wants me to break off tree give me that jig back i may get it here i may get it there well as the boat wake pushes me up on the bank here I'm just gonna break off this whole branch if I can get to it. Ah, oh, crap. There we go. <laughs> All right, y'all. How about that? I've had some close calls with the trees now, but by gosh, we're still rocking the same jig. This, this right here might be the biggest thing I catch today. I ought to have this thing mounted. I'll hang that leaf on the wall. Still got the gulp in good shape on there too. All right. Well, I done anything that was potentially on that tree, I done spooked them, so let's get on the move here again. On the road again, as old Willie said, 
Oh, Willie Nelson. I guess he's still doing all right. He'll outlive us all, probably. His, his lifestyle, back in the 80s, boy, they thought he had been dead by now, you know, all marijuana and stuff. And I don't even know how old Willie Nelson is. But I'm fairly confident he'll outlive us all. Need a, I need a fish. I need to catch a fish so old that he's got one of Willie's records or something down there. Or an eight track or something, you know? You think any of these fish down through here are old enough to know what an eight track is? These fish are probably so far behind us in technology, they may just now be getting a track. They they probably got VCRs or, or beta. Was it beta? Was that what it was called? The thing before VCRs or the thing that was in competition with VCRs? Nowadays, I don't even know if they make DVDs anymore. I, if they do, I ain't even got a DVD player. Well, we watch everything either on Netflix or Amazon. I hardly ever watch a movie. That's, that's one of the things that... Oh, shoot. I'm all up in that vine up there. But that's one of the things that has amazed me the most about these ultralight videos, the these raw and uncut that are... Every one I've done has been at least an hour long. One of them was two hours long. But I'm amazed at the people, that there are people out there who will watch. And my view time on these things have been amazing. I mean, people are watching. Some of you's out there watching all of these videos. And yeah, I'll tell you, me, I, I, can't, I can't hardly sit through a movie anymore. I, I just don't have the patience. I, I mean, I'll sit down, I'll watch a whole football game, you know, I'll, veg out on the couch all daggone weekend watching football. But a a production, you know, like a movie, I just can't hardly do it. If we watch a show, you know, it's normally an hour, 30 minute to an hour program. Me and the girlfriend's been watching that Game of Thrones show, um, the prequel. Gosh dang it, I just threw over another branch. Whatever it's called, House of, House of Dragon, I think, maybe? Or Dragon House? Dragon House, I think. The prequel, to, we watched Game of Thrones a few years ago. Now we're watching this prequel to it. It's been pretty good. Well, that's the only show we're watching right now. Otherwise, it's just football on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then in between, we'll watch that HBO show. And then uh, we watch Shark Tank quite a bit, too. That's kind of our, our dinner program. When all else fails, Shark Tank's on. That's a pretty good show. One of these days, if this if it's YouTube channel ever takes off, maybe I'll have enough money to go and sit on Shark Tank and invest in businesses that are destined to fail. <laughs> Some of them things, they throw all that money out on there. I'm like, who the hell's gonna buy that? People buy all kinds of stuff though. Some of them things though, I was watching one of them. I can't remember what it was. I don't remember if it was like an infomercial or a, I don't even remember what it was now. It may have just been a regular commercial. But it was another one of them as seen on TV products. And basically it was a way to hard boil eggs in the microwave. And I thought, what a genius idea. To be able to, it had like a little container and you put four eggs, pop it in the microwave and you had hard boiled eggs. And I thought that's pretty daggone genius. Like they're gonna sell a gazillion dollars worth of those. I might even buy one. Because who the hell wants to stand over a stove and boil water and, and hard boil eggs, you know? 
I sure as heck don't, but I'll pop them in the microwave for a few minutes. So I thought that was pretty, that's the most genius invention I've seen in a while. I'm gonna end up getting me one probably. I'm wondering if I'm gonna get me another fish at this point though. Hell, I shouldn't have left that tree up there. We ain't hardly done worth a crap since I started coming down through here. And this is the part I really wanted to fish. Dadgummit, daggone fish. They must have been a ice cream social going on with that tree up there or bluegill in the neighborhood was up there. You remember, I don't know, the ice cream socials might still be a thing. I remember old people talking about it when I was young, but I don't know that I've ever actually been to an ice cream social. I did have some ice cream yesterday. I enjoyed a milkshake from the Sonic. Guilty pleasure. Sonic's like everywhere else though. You can't, you can't get no service. You wait forever. They wasn't even hardly that many cars there. But it took them 20 plus minutes to bring a dang milkshake out. I don't know, we got all these jobs open. Like nobody's working right now. I can't figure out what the hell people are doing. Like how are they spending their time? It ain't at a job. Because there's too many, there's too many jobs. There ain't been all these businesses opening the last couple of years. It's just jobs that can't get filled, but you can't find help anymore. And the people they do have at these restaurants and stuff, they ain't, they ain't worth a, a flip. I hate to eat out anymore, really. Anywhere you go, it's, you go get a combo meal somewhere, you gotta spend 10, $12 just to get enough food to fill up. And it tastes awful. It don't look nothing like on the commercials. I just about hate to eat out anymore. I normally, I'll get me a Jimmy Dean bowl at the house for breakfast with some potato chips and a piece of fruit. And then I normally, I eat lunch, I eat breakfast kind of late. I normally, you know, I fish in the mornings typically. Although we're getting to the time of year now, it's, I'm all, as it gets colder, I'll start fishing in the afternoons more. But in these summer months here, I've been, I'll fish in the morning, get home around 11 or noon, eat me a Jimmy Dean bowl and a piece of fruit and some potato chips, and then I don't eat again until dinner. And me and the girlfriend, we normally eat late. We normally eat 8, 8.30 at night. But I'm more of a, a two meal a day kind of person. Might be getting an afternoon snack of some kind. I wish I could feed a bluegill or bass or crappie here uh, some brunch, a mid-morning snack. We're on a, we're on a dry spill, y'all. I gotta catch a fish. Or I ain't gonna have crap for view time. Y'all done gonna be fast forwarding through this. I know how you are now. You ain't catching fish. People be fast forwarding. Gotta keep the action going. Gotta keep things moving. That's why I ain't been doing these, two reasons really. You know, one on the catfishing videos and the carp fishing videos, I, I go live all the time. And those are kind of like raw and uncut footage videos because I mean, I'm, y'all are seeing it, you know, it's live, it's going on. But in those videos, in the live streams, I've got an audience to interact with as we wait on fish. And sometimes, you know, you catfishing or carp fishing, there can be some downtime. You go a while in between bites. And so I've held off on trying to do any kind of raw and uncut video, like regular videos like this for the catfish or carp trips. Cause it's like, you know, if I win an hour between bites, what the hell am I gonna talk about for an hour? I mean, I've went, gosh, I don't know. How long have I been without a fish now on this video? 10, 15 minutes? And look how the conversation has deteriorated. I've talked about microwaving hard boiled eggs, shark tank, 
and me eating a Jimmy Dean bowl damn near every day of the week. I mean, that's where the conversation has went and it's all because these fish, I can't get one to bite right now. Imagine if we went an hour without getting a bite. That's, that could happen on a catfish video. So, I don't know. We may keep these raw and uncut videos here to the ultralight. Which it don't hurt my feelings to go ultralight fishing. I love doing this. I said it'll boost a man's confidence when you're in a slump like I've been in with the catfish the last few trips out. And I'm still just genuinely fascinated with if, you know, just figuring out these videos, if they're going to work out. Like the first one was, I think it's got 20 some odd thousand views, which is average for my channel. And, but the watch time on it was great. And when I did the second one, it blew up. I mean, it's got like almost 70,000 views as, the, as of the time of me filming this. I mean, it did really good. And it was an hour and a half long. And the next one was two hours long. And it's got 40 something thousand views, I think, at this point. So, I mean, it was doing really good above average for my channel. Now, the last one I put out last week, it it's kind of stuttered a little bit. It's, I think, 17, 18,000 views. So it's not done nearly as well. But again, the average watch time for the people who did watch is really good. And the feedback I got, it got more engagement than a lot of my regular videos. So the people who are watching seem to really like it. Here, now, this guy just went up river a little while ago. Here he comes back. Up and down, up and down. Dead gummit. They need to put that boat up. That's what they need to do. We're past Labor Day now, dead gummit. It used to be when boating season ended. Now they run them damn things up through the fall. Yeah, but anyway, y'all, I'm just, I'm genuinely fascinated with how these ultralight uncut videos go. Will it be something that, that we keep going for a while? Will it just, you know, be a novelty thing and fizzle out? It could go either way, I don't know, but if people keep watching, I'll just keep doing it. Sure makes it easy on me not having to edit. Let's go home, throw the, throw the footage on the computer and upload it. I'll tell you what we're about to do here, though, y'all. We're about to make a move here. What I'm doing, I'm working down on these rocks here where I initially wanted to fish. I ain't catching diddly doo-doo down here. We're about to make a run back up there to that tree where I was at. I may just, I may just keep going upriver from there. That tree been enough time now it ought to be biting again up there sometimes i think you pull enough fish off an area it kind of even if there's more fish on it it kind of kind of shuts them down oh man i hit that okay i got out of it but we've been gone long enough now it ought to be them fish ought to be biting again i keep thinking we're gonna run into some more down through here but i mean we're on a long dry spell this is, it's getting a little bit embarrassing at this point. I don't know anybody that ain't fast forwarded by now. But I'd, I'd went up to where the rock stopped and the mud started and we got on that tree there. That's the first kind of cover from the transition. I love transition areas where you go from like a mud bank to a rocky bank. Those, those transitions were that mud meets rock. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, you oftentimes get on some fish in those areas. And that's true, not just ultralight fishing like we're doing today for whatever bites, but I mean, you find those places in the deeper sections of the river, you oftentimes get on some catfish there too. And so I love fishing places like that. And I thought that'd be a good place to start, but I may need to be focusing more on the 
mud portion of the bank today because the rocky section through here just is not just is not producing that's a terrible cast that's a terrible cast we're gonna work it though if we don't get bit here we probably won't we're gonna make a run up where we at here lord has it been 50 minutes already All right, well, let's, uh, let's spin around here. We'll go back up to this tree. We'll fish that tree again, and then I'm gonna just go upstream from there and see what we can get. Hopefully lawnmower woman up here, hopefully she's about done. The yard wasn't very big, so hopefully she's done. And if not, if she's still out in the yard working a flower bed or something, she's going to hear me down here talking on the water and be like, who is that guy talking to? Like he's a nutcase or something. Else. She's going to be thankful I'm out here in the water because she's going to be thinking I'm cuckoo for cocoa puffs. But anyway, we're on the move here, y'all. I'll spin the camera around and y'all can enjoy some scenery. It's a beautiful day out. Nice and comfortable here in the shade. And got the flippy floppy zone. Well, I got them off now. Yeah, I still let she up here mowing still. I figured she'd be done by now. That fella, that fella, if, if she's got a husband and if she's mowing a yard, I mean, she's a good enough woman to have a husband. He better bring her some flowers once in a while. Kiss her on the cheek and tell her he appreciates her at night. You don't find women that do yard work like that very often. That's hard to find, especially in this younger generation. My age and younger, you can't get them out in the yard to do anything. I bet I got the 8% of the women in my audience is offended right now. My woman audience is growing all the time, though. Let me get my, get my shades back on here way when I reel up a fish and we about to start reeling them up again here. I'll look cool. Everybody looks cooler in shades. That's a fact, man. I want these fish to be reeled in by somebody looking cool. Look right here's what the problem. Look at see it. See that? That, that little vine or stick there, whatever. I don't think I've caught a fish since that thing landed in the kayak. That's bad luck. That stick was a jinx. Yeah, we're gonna start here. That tree we started that's right up there. We were still catching some fish right in through this area here. You can see the mud over there on the bank there. We're in that transition area. Yep, here's a fish too, just like that. Broke the slump. You lucky bluegill, use another one that wouldn't have made the video. You'd have never made it, buddy. He didn't want to make it anyway, did he? He was trying to get away the whole time. Ain't that something though? I mean, we covered a good spell, a good stretch of water there. And just nothing happening, but probably caught, hell, I don't know, 30 bluegill or more on that tree. Again, you see that all the time, and it's like, what's special about that tree up there that had that many fish on it versus any other place? Well, I set the hook good in something. I don't know what that was, but it felt good, and it wasn't a fish. We were lucky to get the jig back on that one. That was another one of those things, if I was editing, would not have made the, the cut. <laughs> Another one of them tiny bluegill. In and out, bluegill, in and out. Not worth showing off to the camera there. Tag on skeeters, buddy. Them skeeters get worse in the fall, y'all. September here in East Tennessee, it is awful for mosquitoes. It's like their last hoorah. 
before it gets too cold for them. And they, I mean, they'll gobble you up. I'm gonna put another gulp on here. Get my pea cup. If you're new to my channel, I keep my gulp minnows in a pea cup because it's a leak-proof container, unlike the gulp minnow jars. Some people in my audience have said if you leave the that seal partially on on the gulp, it helps keep the gulp jars from leaking. I feel like you shouldn't have to leave a removable seal halfway on a jar to keep them from leaking. So I just go with pea cup. Y'all do whatever you want to do. Makes no difference to me. The pea cup's a nice conversation piece. Somebody walks up to me at the ramp, you know, oftentimes somebody come up and they see the kayak and they interested, you know, or, you know, that may be somebody who don't even recognize me from YouTube, you know, they're just interested in the kayak and got questions and stuff. They'll oftentimes see my pea cup because I got a pea cup in this kayak and my other one. I always keep some gulp with me. And it's oftentimes a conversation piece as to what that is or why I have a urine specimen cup <laughs> in that kayak. I'm normally just like, well, man, look, you, you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> Here's a fishy. Come on in, fishy, come on down. You are the next contestant on The Price is Right. Bob Barker and Rod Roddy. Y'all ever watch Price is Right? I don't know if it's still on or not. I think it was on after Bob Barker retired. Drew Carey was the host. I don't know if it's still going or not. But when I was a kid and Bob Barker was on, I'd, I always liked the Plinko game. That was always my favorite part of the show. If I could have played Price is Right, I would have wanted to play Plinko. I don't know if it's still on or not. I did see where they Here's another fish. They have removed or are going to remove Days of Our Lives. That's like the longest running soap opera ever. They taking it off the TV and they putting it on streaming Peacock or whatever now. There he is. I can't believe it took this long. That show, I can remember watching that show with my granny as a kid. Hell, I can tell you most of the characters on Days of Our Lives. John and Marlena, Stefano Demera. I think I think old Stefano Demera is dead in real life, but they probably still they probably still using him on that show somehow. They probably got him propped up in the corner. I remember all of them people. Here's another fish. We, it's funny. I get back down here that tree, and here they here they biting again. Probably should have never left this tree. What do you think about bluegill? You glad I come back? He says, hell no, I just put a hook in his jaw. I ruined that fish's day. He'll look back on this day though and have fond memories when it's said and done. It was a traumatic experience for him, but it'll change his life for the better. That fish will go on to do great things because of this day. It'll, it'll inspire him, you know. He survived a fisherman putting a hook through the jaw. and It'll just change his perspective on life. He'll be like, you know, I can do any, if I can survive that, I can do anything. He's going he's gonna to accomplish great things. We'll read about that fish on the news. We'll see him. I don't, I don't know if Bluegill will have newspaper, but he'll be in it. I guess Bluegill probably couldn't have a newspaper down there. The, the ink would wash off the paper. I don't even know if they still make newspapers for us humans or not. My dad used to get the Knoxville News Sentinel every day for my whole childhood. I missed the fish right there. But I don't know if they even still print a newspaper. Everything's online now.
All right. Well, I'm going to make a few casts around this tree and just catch a few fish so I can remember what it feels like after being in that long drought down through there. And we're just going to move on down this way. Oh, man, I felt a thump, and now I'm... He's on. He's wrapped me in something. There he comes. It's like, I know that was a fish. I felt the thump. My drag keeps slipping. I keep talking about getting a new ultralight reel. I'm eventually going to do it. Get out of here, fish. This old $30 Abu Garcia has been so good to me. This rod's a little bit more expensive now. It's a St. Croix Panfish Series rod. It's a $100 rod or it was when i got it i think they're 110 120 now i've had it several years i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to update the, the reel at some point it's it's about had it been a i got my money's worth at 30 dollars i've definitely got my money's worth out of this reel i've caught thousands of fish with it, literally thousands of fish that's not an exaggeration any of you that have watched my ultralight videos, I think I got 70, 80 ultralight videos on this channel. Each one of those ultralight videos catching just tons of fish. Plus all the days I've went ultralight fishing and just haven't filmed. I mean, it's literally in the thousands of fish caught on this thing. So it's been a good reel. Got ever every penny's worth. That's just the nice thing about ultralight fishing, you know, just simple setup. I mean, I'm in a, I'm in my kayak today. I got the pedals. Don't need the pedals though. I mean, I could be out here paddling and catch fish. Um, I could run this kayak. Here's another one. Right here's another fish. You know, I could have, I could have this kayak right off the showroom floor. You know, not have to add any accessories to it and be able to come out and catch the heck out of some fish. Tackle, super simple. One rod, some jig heads. We're still on the same jig head I started with today. And a few gulp. And that one right there, he ate that thing kind of deep. We may be taking this one with us. I may have to, we may have to take this one with us here, y'all. This may be cut bait on a catfish trip. Give me that jig back, Bluegill. Yeah. Yeah, folks, that in there, unfortunately, is bleeding a little bit. I'm going to throw him in my cooler. As the wind pushes, well, I just blew right up on this tree, too. Daggummit. Hooked the bluegill deep and then blew up on the tree. Let me get off this tree here. We're going to spin around. Let's just, let's just start making our way down here now. We'll work along this bank and see what all we get. Hopefully we'll have better luck going this direction than we did going the other direction. It can't be much worse. I don't think we got a fish. Once we got past, once we got onto the rocky area of that shore, did I get a bite down through there at all? I don't think I did. I think it was all that mud, this tree down to the mud, and I think that was it. But yeah, I was saying, you know, y'all, this basic kayak just get it off the showroom floor no accessories needed no you don't need a graph you don't need rod holders you don't need anything just one ultralight rod some jig heads and some gulp or whatever your favorite plastic is it don't matter you know you could whatever you got the most confidence in is the best one to throw and that's all you need and you can go out and catch literally thousands of fish literally you know we i'm bad about complicating the hell out of everything this is a better fish right here this is better i don't know that this is a bluegill right here y'all if this is a bluegill this is the biggest one of the morning i don't know what this is this is this is better right here I'm going to take my time. Again, two-pound line. 
play the fish out. I have no idea what it is. I hope it ain't no damn channel cat. I don't feel like he's really rolling around. I think if it was a bass, he would have come up and been flying through the water. It may be a channel cat. I don't think it's a drum. Oh crap, it is a damn channel cat. I told y'all how bad I hate these things. Let me pull off this area a little bit so I don't blow up on it. He's gonna have our line all slimed up. He's gonna rip the gulp off. He's gonna fight now though, buddy. These channel cats, they're so small around here in East Tennessee, they ain't very much fun on my catfish gear. But on an ultralight, buddy, they'll, they'll, they'll be over. If I, if I went the rest of my life and never caught another one, no, I'd be all right. A lot of us like to eat them things. I wouldn't eat nothing out of here. The Kingston coal ash spill happened right up here. This is probably the most contaminated area of the of the river. They'll tell you they got it all cleaned up, but who knows? It's gonna be a minute here, y'all. Bear with me. Again, if I was editing a video, I'd edit out this portion the remainder of the fight here. I'm trying not to break my line, even though I'll probably have to retie anyway. Come on up here, Channel Kitty. Come on up here. We've, been, we've waited long enough. We've waited long enough, Channel Kitty. Oh, he's trying to get under there under my pedals. Now he's trying to break me off. Yeah, this is, this is about what you get here in East Tennessee as far as channel cats go. Occasionally get one that's decent size, you know, eight to 10 pounds, but most time you get a channel cat, it's like this right here, just a little old thing. Little old, little old bait steel. These things get down there and chew up your catfish baits. Oh, don't splash us now. I ain't got my net with me. Oh, he just broke me off. After all that, he broke me off. Got my line all twisted up. I hate channel cats. Have I told you's? Have I told you's enough? I hate channel cats. <laughs> Check gun things. I'll trim a little of that line off. I'll stick this here behind me. Throw that away when I get back to the ramp. All right. Well, let's get us a, if anybody's still left watching after all that, and who knows if anybody still is, I'm gonna get another jig tied on. I keep my jigs here. I've mentioned this before too, but I got a little magnet here with some jig heads. And I keep them things right here ready to go. Because typically over the course of a, of an ultralight trip, you're gonna lose some. Well, I can't hardly see. Oh, that, that one's messed up right there. The lead's covering the hole. That's why I couldn't thread it through. At my age, y'all, I need some readers or something to thread that line through. But typically over the course of a ultralight trip, you throw into these trees and brush and rocks and throwing up under people's docks and things, you're going to you gonna go through some jigs. I've been fortunate out here today. I ain't. I think this is the first one we've retied right here. I think. But typically lose a handful of them. Some places are worse than others, as far as snags go. It gets real frustrating. You you throw in a piece of brush and break off and retie, and you throw in there the next cast you get hung up and break off have to retie that's part of the game though that's part of it i've said it some other videos these jig heads 
they're a shad dart style the trout magnet type head but i buy these on ebay you can find them on their private sellers you know buy you buy them in bulk 500 a thousand at a time you can get a really good deal you get them things a few cents a piece you know them trout magnet ones are basically the same quality you know they're just name brand and you pay significantly more they're a few dollars for a pack of five or ten or whatever they come in i just soon buy from somebody on ebay dang the old channel cat man could have done without him i knew it wasn't a bluegill instantly though it when I first set the hook, I was like, that ain't a, that ain't a bluegill. This one right here is probably bluegill. He come off. That's one of them tiny ones. You probably can't hear that on the microphone. There's a bald eagle somewhere. I heard him cackling off in the distance. I hope we get on some more fish. Going down this side. I'm gonna go down here, I guess, and just work down to these docks. What time? You know, hell, we're over an hour into this video. I may not may not make it down to them docks in this video, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fish a few hours today. I'm just gonna cut this video off at a good stopping point, somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours. I don't imagine if I fish four hours today. Even the most hardcore, dedicated ovens out there. I don't imagine y'all be watching a full four or five hours of it. <laughs> it may be asking a little bit much. Oh no. I just got snagged again. Boy, I tell you, if, we, if I break off again this soon, all, uh, any audience I had left is gone. There it came. I got lucky. All right. Got lucky right there, y'all. That tree, give it back. That tree understands that we're, we're doing something here important, filming a production today. And whatever that log or snag was didn't want to be part of the show. There's some football referees that need to have the attitude like that log down there had, you know. Don't don't take over the game. Let the players play. Something hit right there. Boy, we about we about took one in the head, buddy. About got plunked. Squirrels up there. Buddy, they squirrels got it in for me, I guess. I had some squirrels a few years ago chew up some wiring in my car at least that's what the mechanic said it calls it squirrels dang things are destructive they tore up my bird feeder at the house too they got up there on my porch and knocked it off and busted the daggone thing i gotta get me another bird feeder before this fall i need to get one now i guess but before it gets cold anyway I like to feed my birds. I'll keep quite a few birds there around the house in the winter. Got a lot of cardinals. Well, there was another nut that hit behind me. Them squirrels, man, they, they got it in for me. I'm just gonna work kind of quickly down through here. See what we come across thus far. That one tree's been been the ticket today. Still, that's been productive though. I mean, we got a lot of fish on that one tree. Like every fish in this area has been on that one daggone tree. I seen a turtle pop up over there too. Boy, if I could reel in a channel cat and a turtle this 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 video would be complete for sure there was some activity 
I don't know if that got on camera. There was something going on up there. Something was chasing Shad. Let's, let's sneak on up here. I'll make a few casts in between, but something was going on up here. There's another tree, a big tree looks like comes off in the water right there. Let's just go on up here and fish this. I see that big, I like seeing them big logs like that coming off in the water because there's, that tree there may stick out a good ways into the deeper water and there was minnows right there busting. Something, was, something had them stirred up. They looked like they were running for their lives right there. By gosh. Yeah, right there they are, there's something right there. Here's something. Just like that, we hooked up. Maybe back on some fish again. Gotta keep your eyes peeled, people. Nature will tell you what's going on. Uh, here's another one we may be taking with us. He, he got that thing kind of deep there. Come here, bluegill. I want it back now. Oh, oh, yep. That and there, folks, he's got to come with us. It happens, unfortunately. It don't happen as much when you throw in a jig as it does when you use a live bait. Something's going all town over there, ain't it? Oh yeah, something got me then. Let's see what this is. Is that another bluegill? I thought that might've been bass or something busting over there. Yeah, definitely get more gut hooks with the live bait than you do with these jigs and gulp, but it's not 100%. It does still happen. And so on it does. I just throw them in the cooler, take them with me. A lot more woman's up there beating something, ain't she? Another fish though. They're all over this tree too. Maybe the ticket right now, these trees that go out over a little bit deeper water. That may be the ticket. Maybe the pattern going down through here. How many is that in a row? Is that three fish in a row? May get another streak going here, y'all. Might be going streaking again. Streak may be ending just like that too. Nope. Go right there's just a fish. They some, they some, at least some bluegill for sure on this tree. This one's thick right here, man. He ain't very long. Why don't you look at this in here? Look at this in his head. For no longer than he is, man. He's got some. He's embarrassed. I don't. He says I'm calling him fat. Even in bluegill don't like to be called fat. That might have been a female bluegill. You know, they're extra sensitive about their weight. I give that fish a complex. He'll have an eating disorder now, or she'll have an eating disorder. Here's another one. Is this five? Oh, wait a minute. What is this? That might be a crappie. That's a crappie right there. That's a crappie. I'll take that. Come here, crappie. Come in here. We're going to throw this one on the board, y'all. This in here may keep. Jig back. Let's just throw this on the board. If he's 10 inches, he's coming with me. This fish says he, he's hoping he's like nine and a half. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he'll work. Oh, boy, I about lost him too, didn't I? I about lost him right there. Hold still a minute, crappie. I just want to... Yeah, he's just shy of 11 inches, so... We got us some bait right there. Nope. Oh, hang on, crappie. Hang on now. Hang on. Tell these people bye, crappie. So you might see me in an upcoming catfish video. All right, man. Well, I kind of blew up over here. 
on the bank while I was doing that, but thankfully I didn't blow up on the tree where they're at. So this tree, again, it looks like an oak tree that's come off that bank and comes out. Lord knows how far away. Let's just make a few more. We know there's bluegill and we know there's crappie. That's exciting right there. We got a streak going too. I don't know how many fish that is in a row. Definite streak. Here's another one. What was it, six? I think it's a six. We're going to call it six. Six in a row. Oh, something come up with him right there. It wasn't very big. It may have been a bass. Gosh dang it. This is another one here that ate it kind of deep. You lucky, Bluegill. You didn't get it deep enough to do any damage, but you still disrupting the program right now, Bluegill. Next time, try to eat it on the corner of your mouth there. He says he'll eat it however he damn well pleases. He says, who the hell am I to tell him how to eat a jig? He says he's been eating his whole life. I think that Bluegill there had attitude. Flip this gulp upside down and wind and currents moved us over here. Let's just go back up here to this tree and do it again. See if we can get fish number seven. Let's see if we can go seven in a row. Where are we at on time? Hour and 20 something minutes. We may, we may fish this tree here and call it a video maybe. This tree, buddy. These trees out over a little bit deeper waters. The, seems to be the ticket. That was a bad cast. I may break the streak here. I'm working it though. I'm working it. I'm trying to keep the streak going. I did. I did. There's seven as we drift along back down river. That's another good sized bluegill right here too. This another one's got some got some weight on him side there. Got some shoulders on him. Oh, oh, and he's gone. I guess I'm gonna have to reposition about every time I make a cast here wind is going directly downstream and got just a little bit of current not much but a little bit to get me moving let's make another can we go eight for eight that's a little better cast that should catch us a fish come on fishy don't break, don't be the fish that breaks the streak. All right, this fish said he didn't want to break it. This fish here said he's been breaking women's hearts since the day he was born, but he ain't breaking no streak. We eight for eight. High and by bluegill. I gotta let you go quick. We got a streak going. All right, can we go nine for nine? I'm just throwing all around that tree. That current will sweep it into the tree as it falls. Something hit me then. That little taparoo. Tap, tap, taparoo. Come on now, fish. Don't, don't break the streak. All right. Nine for nine. He had me in a branch. He come out of it. Nine four nine. I had the Dolly part nine to five in my head then as I was saying that. Fish says he works nine to nine. He's working he's working family dollar hours. Look at all them fish over there messing around, busting. Ten for ten. Ten for ten. This is like a dollar store special right here. A dollar tree, 10 for $10. Dollars. 
and get you cheap party favors that you don't want to pay full price at Walmart for. We got a streak going, y'all. That's 10 fish in a row. Let's see if we can make it 11. Something hit me. Come on. You want it. There it is. <laughs> There's 11. That's a good tree right here. If I could get this jig down below them bluegill, I might catch another crappie. I could put on a bigger gulp and bigger jig and do it, but I like going on these streaks and catching fish dang near every cast. I may do one of these raw and uncut videos with some three inch gulp too. Mix it up a little bit. Here's one swimming. Is this number 12? Come on up here, number 12. Now we're gonna go for lucky 13. Or is it unlucky 13? I don't know if 13's lucky or not. We'll find out. If the 13th fish breaks the streak, we'll know it's unlucky. This will be the test right here. We're gonna put the number 13 to the test on this fish or lack thereof. Yep. Oh, he's got me in something. Oh, and he come off. Crap, man, we broke the streak at 13. Hey, we just solved it, buddy. If you were ever wondering if the number 13 was lucky or not, we just proved it's unlucky because the 13 fish caught me wrapped in a tree and come off. 13's a bad number, y'all. Bad number. Don't, don't pick number 13 on your lotto tickets. 13 ain't going to hit the Powerball. You watch and see. Somebody will hit the Powerball tonight with number 13 and I'll, I'll look completely silly. I'm gonna, now that the streak's over, I'll get this fish in. I'm gonna cast way out on the streak because that's a big tree. And I have no far or no idea how far out it sticks off this bank out into the water here. So let's just make some casts further on out, see what we can get into. I see another little stick up right here. And I thought it was coming off that, but it may be coming off this tree potentially. I don't know. There's one easy way to find out though. That's make some casts. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I had something right there. Oh, there's one. That's another one, a little bass right there. Tiny, boy, you is about as, look at this. You as big as the minna. I'm using, that's a one inch minna and about a four inch bass. Little old thing. Them bass fishermen around here, but they spend $70,000 on a boat to catch them fish right there. I think they're trying to get the ones a little bigger than I just caught, but <laughs> still, you know what I mean. Something tapped me, I think. Yep, yep. This ain't a bluegill, I don't think. This may be another crappie. I fished out a little deeper over this tree and now I'll get down there. Yeah, it is a crappie. Now we own some crappie right here. Got away from the bluegill and into the crappie. We'll throw this one on the board. He's gonna be close. This in here, we'll find out. Let's see what we got here. You may be short, crappie. Oh man, look at this. 
He's, he's short, about nine and three quarter. You know, fish normally, if somebody was to tell you, especially a female, if a female was to tell you, you're about a quarter inch short, it'd be a bad thing, but being a quarter inch short to save that fish's life. All right, may have figured out a little something here with the crappie, y'all. We an hour and a half in, I'm gonna keep it going for a few more minutes here, just see if I can get some more crappie on this tree. I'm gonna be fishing out a little bit deeper on it and see if we can pick off a few more out here toward the section of the, I, again, I don't know, hell, this tree may come on out 30 feet off here for all I know. I'm going to throw in that area right there and we'll see what we can get. See if we can get another crappie. I don't have, you know, I have live scope on my other kayak. And live scope is very helpful in this situation. Like if you want to look forward, you know, look out at something, see where fish are at. Now, is it necessary? Do you have to have that? Heck no. And you can see right here, we're catching a ton of fish today, no electronics at all. But if I come out today and I was specifically targeting crappie, that live scope would be a very helpful tool. Something hit me right then as I was reeling in. That's another one of them bass. Boy, the bass and the crappies out here way out. But that live scope will show you everything, every detail of this tree and exactly where fish are at on it. But we're gonna catch fish without it or any electronics for that matter. If I did this style of fishing all the time, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have electronics. Because I can get fish doing this 365 days a year with this same this same setup. You know, in the winter, in the winter months when it gets bitter cold, you gotta change up your game a little bit. You gotta hit the creeks and or something hit me. Get out on the sunny days, you know, in them creeks and and fish, or fish really deep, put on a heavier jig head, fish deeper, but you can catch them. Seven days a week, 365, doing this right here. Super muddy water and high wind days is the only times that you won't catch fish doing this. High wind is the word. You can still get a few bites in the mud. Like, like I'm talking chocolate milk. You'll still get some fish. But if the wind's cranking, if you can't feel them bites, if the wind's blowing a big bow in your line and moving your jig really fast, that's when you, that's when you run into problems. I had a little bass try to hit me right then on the way up. <laughs> little bass, them little things. They all about three, four inches long. I'll switch out another gulp here. I'm having fun, y'all. I don't know if y'all having fun watching me. Lord, we're an hour and a half in. There may not be anybody left, but if y'all are, I'm glad you've come along with me today. And I hope that watching this video and this kind of format, I hope you've, I hope you felt like you've been out on the water with me today. I hope this is kind of a, a way to make you feel like you were here. Because Lord knows if you was here, you would have heard about everything that I've, I've said today. Undoubtedly, we would have got on a conversation about Jimmy Dean bowls and microwavable hard-boiled eggs at some point in time. It would have happened. Come on, crappie. Give me another crappie out of that tree. Come on. Any of y'all out there want to see another crappie? I do. Them little, I had another little bass right then. The bass are getting after it on the, on the retrieve as I'm reeling it in. The bluegill and the crappie are coming as it falls down in them branches. Let out a little bit more line, let that thing sink. I 
It's letting that thing get down in them branches. We may lose a jig if we don't get bit. There's a fish too. I think that's another crappie. No, that's bluegill. I must have been in a branch. He felt a little bigger than that at first. I must have been coming through a branch. Gosh, dog, this is another one. It's ate it kind of deep. You bluegill are disrupting the show with these, these deep eating. Deep, deep, deep take. You know what I'm trying to say. You know what I'm trying to say there. Yeah, this is another one that's going to be coming with us here. I can't hardly see down in it. There we go. All right, Bluegill, I'm sorry, buddy. You coming with us. Looks like I'm going to be using some Bluegill on the next catfishing session, whether I want to or not. That's like, what is that, three, four? Well, we'll try to catch something with them. I'm going to let them go to waste. I'm kind of curious about these two docks up here, too. There's another dock right here beside this tree. Curious what's going on over there by it. I'm curious about all this stuff, man. Here's something. These fish all the way out through here, man. That's the fun thing. One of the many fun things about ultralight fishing is you come down through here and you see all this stuff. Whether it be like a tree like this coming down in the water, or these docks, and you just never know what's going to be holding fish. Could all be holding fish. There's a anticipation there and excitement that it's like what's going to be the next bite? It could be bluegill. It could be bass, it could be channel cat, it could be cropping. Yellow bass, white bass. Oh, look at them. There's a whole, there's a whole bunch of bass right there. This is another small one, but there was a bunch that had that come with him. This fish got friends, man. He brought all his friends up here to try to whoop me. And bass, uh, we, we, we're tired of you catching all our bluegill over there. That's their food, man. They say I'm, I'm putting all their food in the in the cooler there. They about sick of my ass. I bet that's bass I'm seeing. Something hit me right then. Them little, them little splashes like that. I bet that's bass chasing bait. Right there was one. Let me put it back in his face. Oh. I'm gonna make this cast and one more on the tree. I'm gonna go over here and fish this first dock and we're gonna call it a video. Cause we at an hour and 30 something minutes and, oh, did you see that? That bass come after it. <laughs> Old bass. He thought he had him one, didn't he? Let's make one more cast right here. I just wanna sneak up and Throw a few casts at that dock on video. I'm gonna spend a little more time on this tree though before I go today. I'll probably fish my way on down and then come back to this tree and come back to the other tree that we started this video at. And this and here come free. I'm going it. He worked for it. Boy, they're all over there now. But yeah, I'll work my way down and then circle back to these places that we've really tore up the fish and hit them again before I leave today. You get torn, you know, you want to keep throwing at this tree because you keep getting bit. But I see all this other stuff down here and I'm like, man, I'm liable to be getting bit with even bigger fish down there. Yep. <laughs> there ain't no telling how many fish is on this tree, y'all. There could be hundreds on here. All different variety of species. That's, a, well, that's another big bluegill right there. This one here was smart enough to get the hook in the lip and not a 
down his gullet. Say hi and bye, bluegill. Let's just, let's sneak over here at this dock one time. Maybe make a cast or two in between it. Something hit me just as soon as it hit the water. That was, I mean, he was on it. That's another small bluegill. You consider yourself lucky too, Mr. Bluegill, as you wouldn't have made the video today if we wasn't raw. Look at the color on his tail. You pretty thing. Let's see what's happening at this dock. Something hit me. It's small. Man, they is just fish all up and down through here. Ain't that something though? We turned and was going back toward the car along the rocks and getting nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. We had, gosh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes there probably of just nothing. And turn and come back the other way and now it's just everywhere you go down through here is just loaded with fish. I mean, you can't hardly make a bad cast. It's funny how fish are. If I ever, if I ever get them figured out, I'll, I'll write the book and let y'all know. Every time I think I know something, I get proven wrong. These fish have a way of, of humbling a person. Like I said to start, if you're in a slump like I've been with the catfish lately, get your ultralight, get you get your jigs and gulp, and head to the lake. Because you'll go out and have a day like today and just catch a ton of fish. We've got I don't know how many bluegill now. A couple crappie, a few small bass. And this style, and not only is it fun, it just makes you feel like you're a better fisherman than you are. And it is fun. You know, I ain't real impressed with what's going on through here. Let me cast over here again. That dock don't really come out very far. Our better fish is coming way on out on that tree, out over deeper water. sink down a little further. I thought there might be something out in front of this dock possibly, maybe some brush or something. Oftentimes people sink brush in front of their docks, they can come out and set, but that dock area don't look like it gets used very much. If I was out here, if I lived out here, Again, over here behind the camera, you got, I'm spinning around. Over my shoulder here, you got the Emory River. And you could, a person with one of these docks, you know, you get you a, a longer rod, get you a surf rod. You could make a cast and have a bait, a catfish bait out there in the middle of that channel. Have it worked right up on the edge of the ledge, you know. I'd have a line out all the time eyes on the water and then you could be sitting here with the ultralight rod catching the hell out of fish waiting on the catfish to bite I guarantee you if you if you was on a dock down here and had a you know just had you every evening you get home from work you come out you cast out a cast out a bait you'd catch the hell out of some fish man just have a line out in the water a few hours every day. You get you some big cats down here. Probably a bunch of striper too. There's a bunch of striper caught in this area also. That dock failed me, didn't it? I'm just gonna drift down here and we'll catch another fish on this tree or somewhere in between right here for them. Why don't we just catch one right here, why don't we? We'll 
reel this one in and maybe you and I will will part ways. What do you think about that? You think it's time for it? Should we? Like I said I ain't done fishing. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a few more hours. Make my way on up through here to see what's going on. See if uh, I can find a few more places as stacked as these two trees that we've really got on the, the fish. Give me that jig back fish. There we go. He got it kind of deep. I think that one's going to be okay. We'll see you fish. That fish there had the prestigious honor of being the last fish on the video, and I don't think he felt very honored. I don't, I don't think he was appreciative of that gesture. But uh, anyway, y'all, if you've sat through all hour, 40 something minutes of this, thanks. I hope you're liking this kind of thing. I hope you're enjoying it. For those of you that have given me the positive feedback and keep tuning in to them, I appreciate you. As long as y'all watching, we'll keep doing it. But um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make a few more casts at this tree, I guess, after I turn the camera off here and then head on up this direction. And I'll work these docks and these other trees that are coming out and see what else I can find. But uh, been a productive morning out here either way with just the fish I caught. I, I wish I'd been kind of keeping track to know how many I've gotten here because it's probably, I gotta be over 50 fish, right? I mean, just, I mean, the two streaks that I went on there on that tree was, I don't know. I don't know how many I've caught. It's been a bunch. It's been fun either way. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.